Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news crunches for Wednesday, January 11th, 2017. Wednesday begins with a follow-up to yesterday's story, with Platinum Games making an official statement apologizing for the cancellation of Scalebound. And while the apology did seem sincere, it did not explain the reasoning for canceling a game that had four years of development put into it, and my understanding was practically finished. Scalebound's game director also took to Twitter to dispel any rumors about him taking time off for his mental health. Next, there's a rumor going around because the PlayStation Store indicates Horizon Zero Dawn may be delayed. Instead of displaying the pushed forward release date of March 1st, it's currently displaying the previously known date of March 3rd, and we'll just have to wait till either Sony updates their store or developer Guerrilla Games makes an official announcement. Another rumor surrounds Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy games release date because of a GameStop post which not only gave it the date of April 25th, but they gave a synopsis of the game as well. Yeah, way to screw the pooch on that one, GameStop. If you're interested in Tales of Basuria, which launches on January 27th, there is now a demo available on both Steam and the PlayStation Store. Releasing on February 21st is Night in the Woods for PS4, PC, Mac, and Linux. Then later this month, The Sims 4 will be getting some vampire-themed DLC on January 24th. Six more games have been added to Xbox One's backwards compatibility list. Strania, Scrap Metal, Ghostbusters, Dragon Age Origins, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. A closed beta for For Honor is going to take place from January 26th to the 29th, and if you want to sign up, there is a link down below. Halo Wars 2 will be getting a physical release release in both a standard and special edition. The 18th elusive target for Hitman is known as the Chameleon, and if you wait long enough, they will show their true colors and you can take them out. Tim Sweeney, the founder of Epic Games, has recently said the HTC Vive is outselling the Oculus Rift by roughly 2 to 1, which is really interesting because the Rift not only is cheaper initially, but it can be run on a lower cost machine. Next up, we have four updates that we're going to try to cover really quickly. But before you do any gaming, if you're on an AMD graphics card, there's a driver update to version 16.2.2. Rocket League is updated to version 1.27, adding a new snowy Utopia Coliseum. Following suit and adding a new map is Gears of War 4, which is now live and adds 280 new cards for you completionists out there. And then finally, Rainbow Six Siege has implemented a bunch of bug fixes today, including the infamous yet beloved Raptor Legs glitch. Too bad SLI support for the game is still broken. Did you know that Ubisoft does not officially support SLI for any of their games? Next up, we finally have some video of what the game Sea of Thieves is going to play like. And while the video is mostly two people talking about what goes on in the game, we do get to see a bit of the goals like hunting and digging for treasure, navigating your ship, and building a base. I'm really excited for this one because it looks like a co-op survival game, and who doesn't love sailing on the high seas? Which brings us to our main topic of the day, the Nintendo Switch. We're probably going to see a lot of stuff about the Switch leading up to its launch. So let's start with the price, which was hinted at a few days ago of being somewhere between 250 and 300 US dollars. Well, Walmart has started taking pre-orders for the system with a $400 down payment. Target's pre-order information tells a much different story as they are only requesting $300 to secure one and have a selection of 15 games. Then finally, we have a leak for the Nintendo Switch, and the first thing that's on Nintendo's mind is... Accessories! Leaked to NeoGAF is a ton of pictures showing the accessories Nintendo has allegedly planned for the Switch, including a plethora of carrying cases and game cases, skins for the home dock and the tablet itself, a folding stand so you can prop it up while you're on the go, a charging station, a pro controller, a wired ethernet adapter, a car charging adapter, which I think it's really, really nice. But they also have plans for an arcade-style controller box mainly used for fighting games. Remember all those stupid plastic extensions for the Wii controller and all of them were pointless? <laughs> yeah, Nintendo made a killing off of all that crap! So granted, this question would be a little bit easier if we had one in our hands because necessity is the mother of all invention. But is there an accessory for the Nintendo Switch that you didn't see on this list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Segways are for losers. It's time for tomorrow's game releases for PC, Caldarius Blaze, Flower Design, Hell Girls, Zup 3, Detention, Loran, Lucid Trips, Unhack 2, Vindictive Drive, Introvert Quest, and Fractal. For PlayStation 4, Life of Black Tiger, and for Nintendo 3DS, Shift DX. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And I found someone selling a TV, but the volume was broken and set at maximum. I couldn't turn it down. That... That was the stupidest joke I've ever done. I am sorry that uh, the episode's up a little bit late today. The little one had a dentist appointment. And then I have fought with NVIDIA and Ubisoft over broken SLI for two hours. That was great. I don't know anything more than when I started. Yay! Click over here to subscribe. Click over here for yesterday's episode. Don't forget to like. Uh, and don't forget to share this episode on every place that you can. Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, every place. Go share! Bye!